Why it's been a quiet week for news, Kelly? What are we going to talk about? Oh, like yeah, there's like been nothing. Any, nothing happening in the world. Very calm, and that's weird. You know, with Trump's America, we really thought things would be kicking off, but mm. surprisingly quiet. Yeah, no PR nightmares, no abuse of power, no nukes in the news every day. Yeah, no like irresponsible brat trying to poke anyone to go to war doesn't give a <laughs> shit who i mean that's not happening so you know there's no um you know prison camps being set up anywhere for lgbt yeah, people well they don't exist in that. chechnya they don't exist oh yeah, oh, yeah. they were they would there, be there murdered is... by their families first because yeah no no they oh, wait, wouldn't what, that wasn't it no they don't exist and if they did their family would send them somewhere where they couldn't return Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. So anyway, so it's quiet this week. There's there's absolutely nothing to talk about. Um, but with that peace being said. Peace and love. Peace and love. And uh, have you been up to anything? Like, have you done anything um, interesting? Actually, yeah, I did make a lot of progress. Um, so I've been making, a, like, dating sims. I, there's a lot out there that are just really, they're pretty much geared towards men, but women like them a lot. And I kind of want to fill that gap because... While there are these sorts of games for women, um, you're gonna make men more, with like big dicks. They could be more hardcore. Um, I don't know. I think I might start like teen friendly and then work up to nudity, or do like a nude version with sex scenes. Do a nude add-on and charge <laughs> people like a million dollars for it. You know, yeah. with a small loan of a million dollars, you can do anything. Well, I was thinking like a lot of these people do Patreons that are pretty successful. Um, and I was thinking my Patreon could have, you could have the 18 plus package. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I'll do that. But the big progress I made was I found a 3d program that I really like. So you make, you sort of design, um, 3d figures, uh, in this program. And then it creates it into a 2d image using like, it's called NVIDIA iRay or iRay. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, but it makes really beautiful images that look like they're from like, you know, like a really next gen game except it's just a 2d Im image i can do animations too but um i've been making a lot of progress with that program and i've made a lot of like just stuff that looks really good so i'm progressing i'm getting there uh i already know that's how awesome. to like code the actual dating sim that's not going to be an issue but it was more the art thing i was worried about lately like whether i should hire an artist or maybe do something myself, but <clears throat> I'm really hands-on and I like doing things myself because sometimes when other people do them, I just don't always like how things turn out, especially like for creativity, creativity wise. So this just gives me full creative power. And there's so many 3d assets online that I can just use that are already completed that look great characters I can use. So it's that's good. awesome. It, Kelly tried yeah. to get me into Sims <clears throat> a couple of years ago. Sorry, my throat infection still hasn't gone. Two courses of <laughs> antibiotics. I think it's a bowler. Um, but um, Kelly tried to get me into it a few years ago, and there were just too many things to click. I was like, this is... Oh, The Sims 4? Yeah, yeah this I can't is, remember This what is it a was. little different, but um, yeah, The Sims 4, is, that's good too. I just... Uh, pff, too many things, man. Yeah, it takes a while. Like, <laughs> out. No patience. No, I've been pretty... Pretty boring. Um, for those of you who know I play Magic, I'm kind of just on the internet scouring for spoilers of the new set that's coming out. Um, been playing a lot of remastered COD. It was fun. Now I have my new Scuff controller. Thank you guys at Scuff for sending me <laughs> one without the rumble strip. Uh, I had this issue with my controller and uh, I'd be playing and like the rumble would just like come on yeah and you know with the that's nerve scary. problems in my hands it just my hands just drop them like they, yeah, they really spaz out you. and like the controller gets like flag on the floor and i'm like i was shooting somebody <laughs> oh my so they God. sent me one without the rumble pack so thank you scuff uh, so i've been addicted to battlegrounds i don't know if you've seen that <clears throat> i deliberately am not looking at any games like i saw a little too much of overwatch and i was like i could lose days to that yeah i wanted to buy overwatch so bad and i was like no stop stop just like don't. i almost got addicted yeah. to league of legends and i just had to like oh get luckily rid of it. i hated league of legends i hated it i, I hated it at first too we play it and i was like, I like this, this is shit they have this mode called hexakill that i just love and i will like just it only comes out every once in a while so when they have that i just 
League of Legends. No. I have to like do this when it comes to video games because I have work to do and that's it's... how I am. Yeah, like you can't. So, you know, I see all these people on Twitch that I follow streaming these games I haven't heard of and I deliberately don't watch because I don't want to know. Uh, Overwatch, I, I came a little too close to buying it. Um, but, yeah, you know, me too. The, I was the on the order page and then I canceled. I was like, there's no fucking way. I can't do this right now. <laughs> yeah, cannot. like the, the beauty of COD is you can go on for one game and come off, you know, so it's like seven to 10 minutes max. Mm -hmm. And that's it, that's my fix. But I, I can see myself with something like Overwatch or any of these other games, like H1Z1. Like that's something- Oh I yeah, like, I got addicted oh, to that nope. for a while. Nope. Like, you know, Kyle would lose days <laughs> sometimes. I'd be like, oh, you are awake. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> I'll be playing. Did you see? That's how I am no. with Battlegrounds right now. <laughs> it's like, I like it a lot better than H1Z1. Yeah, I can't. I can't do that. I don't have time. I got work don't to do. do I got bath bombs to make. I'm still somewhat covered in Epsom salt. I bet you but... smell delicious, though. I do smell delicious. <laughs> I do. I think right now I smell of. Oh, it was the floral ones today. Yeah. Not so I was good. just watching um Battlegrounds stream. I think it was Ice Poseidon. He's a pretty big streamer. Uh, he got swatted in the middle of it. I was like, I've never seen one live today. But... Yeah. Um, the cops were really chill though. Like they just knocked on the door. It was one of those situations. So, yeah, yeah. um, I'm happy for him that that happened. He shares his address a lot and I'm actually really surprised. I think this was like his first time, but wow. no, yeah, sure. I was watching, um, I think the creatures stream when they got swatted. That was a really bad one. That was a nasty one. Like Jordan got his, you know, there was a boot on the back of his head while he was being yeah, cast thrown out. down. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, <clears throat> mm -mm. Yeah. people need to stop that shit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, fairly boring week. Just been doing magic and work and, and stuff like that. But, you know, for as boring as our lives have been, <laughs> the world has been a crazy fucking place. But before Wait, we actually, do that... Wait, actually, in terms of my life, I want to say this right before we get in all the effed up shit. Like, it's been hard to focus on things for me. Like, I've been just refreshing the news, like, looking for updates on things and then there's so many fear-mongering titles that it just sort of gets to you after a while and you just want to know, all right, what's next, what's next, what's next? And yeah, it's, it's been hard to concentrate this weekend. Yeah, like Kelly and I will talk usually on the phone before we do a podcast. I mean, essentially this podcast is our usual weekly conversations anyway, but pre-podcast, we're just like, man, this is shit. Like, this <laughs> yeah. is, like... We thought that when Trump would become, you know, wouldn't become president and politics would even out, like we didn't think we'd be covering politics and, and, we, and we spoke about it and we were like, well, do we want to cover it? And then it, it started getting to the fact that where it's affecting people like us, you know, it may not be at this part of the world or whatever, and, and we just can't avoid it. Um, the cool thing is, is we're going to start hopefully doing the Real Talk episodes, which will be a bonus podcast every now and again, maybe once a month. Um, and we're trying to schedule um, a YouTuber called Brittany Simon on. Um, and she is a polyamorous, bisexual, BDSM YouTuber. Yeah, so, so we're she starting does... off great. Yeah, yeah. So we're <laughs> coming in strong. Um, so, But for that, we're going to do a QA and a section as well. So um, we'll leave details in the description of how to get your questions to us if you want to remain anonymous. Um, if you don't give a shit about everybody knowing what you're asking, you can tweet them at us. You can leave your questions in the comments. It can be anything sex related, anything sex toy related, BDSM, poly, bisexuality, or anything like that. Um, and I'm sure one of the three of us will be able to, for the most part, answer it. Yeah. Hopefully. But yeah, we wanted to do something. We know a lot of you guys have asked when we've touched on things um, that, are, that are in those kind of areas. So we figured let's get a YouTuber on. And we found Brittany. Yeah, and she seems And she's crazy enough this, to yeah. be like, yeah, I'll come on. She didn't give yeah. a fuck. She's perfect. like, sure, sounds fun. <laughs> first, bless her. Like, I, so I, when I was searching for like, you know, BDSM YouTuber or whatever, she was live streaming at the time. And this was like really late at night. So I was like, you fucking kidding me? There's this chick, you know, on YouTube live streaming about like BDSM education or whatever. And um, so I just like outright in the chat, I said, Kelly, go watch this. And we were like, yeah, yeah, it should be great. And in the chat, I was like, would you be interested in coming on a podcast? And she's like, oh, I need to look you up. 
you might be some Christian church. I was like, <laughs> praise be to God. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes. <laughs> I don't think that's Christian where we were. Welcome but. to our Holocaust camp. No. No, Holocaust Center. Get it right. Oh, yeah, right. Sorry. Yeah, Holocaust, Holocaust Center. My bad. But anyway, but so there's some light topics for you. Uh, if you've got Crazy any questions you'd like dude. to know, if you have any queries about interests about sex toys that you want to know bdsm if you're thinking about uh becoming poly or you are poly or bisexual whatever just send us a message if you've got any questions we'll pick a few uh and we'll address them in that episode it will probably be next week or the week after but we don't know britney has got a crazy schedule um so yeah kelly yeah oh and i should say like i'm really this week well, we didn't do last week, and it's so my fault. I have, like, all over my office are just computer parts everywhere. There's, like, I took apart so many things just to get a working setup, but I'm good now. I'm happy with what I have. It's just I bought new stuff, and then it was all back ordered. And the thing they finally sent me, <clears throat> Amazon sent it in the actual um, box of the motherboard, and it wasn't taped shut. It was just open. A motherboard. And wow. uh, I mean, it looked fine and everything, but it definitely didn't work. And I had waited like a month and a half for it. And uh, so I just have to send it back. And then I have one on back order again, which is going to take like 10 years. So I don't even know. I think I might just cancel it and say fuck off. And uh, new egg. Use, this is like <laughs> Alex's old streaming PC, but he always buys like new nice PCs. So it's like. I don't really need to upgrade if I just use this. It's really nice. I put my new graphics card in it. It's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. But yeah, so I, everyone heard that, right? It's Kelly's fault. My fault. My fault. <laughs> Unlike my power cut. That was a funny. Like, <laughs> everything's your fault. I don't want to say it just in case, man, because it's raining outside. Oh, God. We, yeah, Please yeah. We're getting don't. to the end of kind of stormy season here. So it should be all right. But anyway, Kelly, I believe... You owe us an ad read for your latest fashion <laughs> If you noticed, line. I'm not just wearing this because I was like, I think I'll wear a trash bag today. <laughs> <laughs> so we should explain what I got you first. Mm -hmm. Or should we let the ad do the talking? Well, so for my ad, I thought I would do like, you know how like with ShamWow, he kind of does, does like live demonstrations yeah. of like the products. I would figured I would just do that. It's not really... Just like, hey, guys, this is, I don't know if it's like a standard ad read. But so it's, normally uh, we don't buy the product, but because this was like, I don't know, 750 or whatever, when I found it, I was like, oh, I'm just sending this to you. Do whatever. Yeah. So we have the Gotta Go Poncho, which I am wearing. It's very nice. And I think you guys are really going to love the pee bag. I think it's mirrored, but. So do you want to explain what it is? Oh, yeah, I should. So. Basically, you know, you might be at a sporting event or at a concert and you need to go to the bathroom, but rest out in the wilderness, really wherever. But there are other people around. You don't want them to see your pussy. Um, so you got the gotta go poncho and, and bags and it makes going to the bathroom very clean and uh, private. Yeah, you can just put on your poncho and it's very long. So it hides yeah. your things. Yeah. So you can just squat in a crowd. Okay, we're... All right. So now on to... The pee bag is really fucking nice. So look at this. You lay your vagina right in there. Oh, it's cushioned. It's cushioned. It's fucking cushioned. And you just pee in there. And then... You can't, don't wave it so fast because your camera blurs a little. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we need to see it. So it's shaped. Yeah, it's shaped. It's really nice shape. I have a shape like this for like um, backpacking, but it's like plastic. It's like so you can make your vagina a wiener. Um, oh, I the sheepy. Say vagina. The that's sheepy. Inside. And then they give you some cocaine in there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not, it's, um. <laughs> what is do it? Do not eat, so don't eat it. What is it? Just silicone? It says sap. It um, says sap. It's not like the little silicone thingies. They're like, maybe it's just really small silicone things. It's more like really like small crystals. So maybe it is. All right. So that's the pee bag. Pretty good shit. Oh, wait. Hold on. 
I think you got something else for a pretty good ship. Look at that. Oh my God. An informative diagram showing you how to use it. They've <gasps> thought of everything. Open bag and press against body around urinary opening for males and females. <gasps> go. Unisex. It just says go. Oh. Go. Wait. Sorry. Could you imagine using that? <laughs> like putting on a trash bag and just like squatting in a field? Yeah. It would, you know what? Honestly, it would be it would be okay. Go. You're Oh wait, yeah, go. Urine instantly transforms into gel, preventing leakage and odor. Hold up, I got water. Yeah, Actually, you I've gotta show us. Pour some water in there and then put the thing in. Let me put that in there. Okay. No, I think you might have to take the powder out. No, I don't know if you do. Wait. Because if it's in plastic, the liquid's not gonna get it in the plastic. It doesn't say to, no, it doesn't say to, um. Are there holes in the plastic? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I still don't think it's gonna work if you don't take it Wait, out. Wait, hold up, let me make sure it's open. <laughs> All over the keyboard. Oh, I got a infection. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. What's that? We'll let that simmer. While we check yeah, out shake the it bag. a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, such a good pee. All right. And now the poop bag. So, Let's how does it work? Really quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh look in their little poncho wait does he have a little wiener is he tying it on his bum oh that's a string what the fuck is that oh that's what the blue thing was are you I was supposed so to confused. tie it okay. to your butt let me show you guys that again because it's really odd oh it's got handles to hold on to alright um... so you can brace you can be like <laughs> all right let me open this oh there are the handles okay all right so <laughs> wow that's a lot of handles that's like three handles all right i think you like tie this to your your thigh i don't think this is very practical this seems really complicated i remember i was like i don't know i was pretty young but my family was in like uh, a big football field at like the local high school for like 4th of July just to watch the fire uh, works. And so there are a lot of people and I had to go to the bathroom and they just like put a blanket over me and I like went in a bucket and it, se it was really easy. Yeah. But this seems like hard. What you see I as guess a it's kid, better than a carrying around a bucket though. Yeah, as a kid that's perfectly acceptable but an adult, yeah. not so much. I don't know. I wouldn't mind if an adult, if I saw an adult doing that. I fucking would. But well, you can't see them under, like, wherever they are. I don't care. Are. I'd know. You would. I'd be like... But it's just pooping. As long as they clean up. For... All right. I'd be like, I see you. <laughs> All right. It's kind of like... All right. Now, is that a good look at it? It's sort of like a, a handbag. Yeah. It just looks like a shopping tote. Like... Let's go. For your sweater and your and your <laughs> new jeans. What if you grabbed this instead <laughs> of your shopping bag? <laughs> Hold on, let me get to my... I don't know what you would have. Yeah, look at my sweat. You just oh. grab your poop. <laughs> and then there was this thing. I think this thing... Is that to wipe your butt? Ew, it's wet. Why is that wet? Oh, it must have been the water spilled on it somehow. You hope. Um, this is just like a, a bag. Maybe that's so. what you attached, and then you put that in the normal shopping bag. Let's see. Maybe. Wait. Okay. Positive. Po oh, position poop bag. Grip black loop handles of enclosed white poop bag and pull open. Position bag around bottom as if you are sitting in a bucket swing, with anus at the center and pull to hold bag in place. The blue tail strap may be pulled between legs and held by either hand for a more secure fit. Then go. Disposal. Fold white poop bag. Drop into blue waste bag tie knot. Okay, so you throw this away into that blue bag. Ah, uh, okay. So I'm gonna demonstrate this one. Hold on, let me get off my pants. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we have a nice little Snickers. Satisfies. Such a satisfying poop. This All is right? not sponsored by Snickers in any way. <laughs> Unless they wanna start paying us. 
But they right, kill right. me. Why are you not standing up and doing this, showing us under the poncho? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I can't do that. Oh! Nice it, look, it looks like a shit. <laughs> okay, sorry, I punched the mic. Okay. Oh. Tasty. All right. Okay. What the, hell? what the hell? All right. Sorry. All right. So you have your poop. You have your oh, poop. Oh, God. It's stuck to the end. Oh, it's on the handles. I got my poop on the handles. Oh. <laughs> yeah, a nice little wet one there. Some leftover. Corn and peanuts and I am far too squeamish for this shit. Then Why you did dispose I dispose? And the, the blue bag. Get the straps in there. And you throw that away. And then hold on. Did I get chocolate anywhere? Well. Oh. Then <laughs> toilet cloth. Everyone needs a toilet cloth. For folks on the go. All right, that's just pretty much. It says wallet sized. For this uh, whole kit is wallet sized. You gotta have a bloody. So then big you got wallet. your toilet cloth. You're gonna open it, and this is pretty high quality cloth. Let me show you this. Wow, I'm impressed. A really nice cloth. Very gentle on your bottom, your anus. If you have hemorrhoids, you're not going to have any issues here. It'll be very comfortable for you. And you take your anus and just, just swipe that, wipe it right up. And you'll dispose oh. of it in the bag. And that is the Gotta Go poncho. So and it wasn't like it an all? ad read. It was more of an unboxing for me this week, but... I figured but it was imagine better. doing that, like putting the poncho on and having to faff with all that stuff under the poncho. Like, stand up. Let's do a twirl. Come on. No. Come on. Sorry, I wasn't getting up. I have a really long cord. <laughs> oh, my God. This thing's like huge. It's really big, though. Like, oh, okay. I mean, like. Yeah, it's plus size friendly. Okay. And very yeah, fashionable. I think you could fit, I like say. a thousand pound person in this. Nice. So oh, okay, might, the, they. I don't know if they could like hold their hands back to poop in a fucking bag though. So if you're that big, to. don't get one. I, I, I think... honestly just something's telling me that not a lot of people are gonna go out and buy one of these. But if you do, we'll put a link in the description. No, it's actually like I'm telling you that would be good for like, you know, just an event where you're not gonna have a lot of bathrooms nearby or they're gonna be overcrowded. You don't want to, like, lose your spot. I don't know. No fucking way. Like, people, like, get to rig their own versions anyways. Nope. This is, not like, happening. really nice. And <laughs> but, I okay. I believe at least so, one person's going to buy it. Yeah. So what's my ad read for next week? <laughs> I've got to, shall I click it? Because <laughs> yes. I know you can't. <laughs> it, actually, I can now. Okay. You have, well, I originally clicked on um, the zebra, the edible zebra tarantula. Oh, but no. But I saw, also saw bug of poop tea, which is bug tea. Hang on. Ew. Aged moth larva droppings in tea bags. It's moth shit in a tea. Yes, it is. <laughs> Am I supposed to try this? Like, are you wanting me to do like a ad read or are you actually wanting me to try this? I kind of want you to try it. I just tried the gotta go poncho. <laughs> but it wasn't in your mouth. I mean, the Snickers bar was though. All right. All right. I'll do it. <laughs> For I those mean, of you wanting to if, know I mean, what I've, it's I'll, like. Honestly, I, um, I did a video where I had uh, one of these. It was like, crunchy larva barbecue style um it didn't really taste like anything but i didn't like the texture but the tea would probably be easier but what's it gonna taste like 
Oh, I'm sending you some too. I mean, I'll taste it with you. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'll send you a bag. Oh. Don't bother, it tastes terrible. It's called bugger poop tea. And on Why Amazon, would you think it was going to taste good, you assholes? Yeah, and on Amazon, you can find it as moth dropping tea, and you only get five bags in a pack. It's quite expensive $13 for five bags. Tastes Maybe like it's ass. A delicacy? <laughs> I'm just like, this is tea made of shit, but it can't be any worse than Lipton, right? Mixed bugs. I bought these for my kids. They enjoyed them. <laughs> what the fuck? My parents were buying me books. I would. I'd hate them. I'd be going to the Department of Child Services, but that's probably because I'm British. <coughs> and shit tea is, is a crime. I'd be sneaking anything. some poop into their food. Oh, I wouldn't be sneaking it. I'd get up on the table and just squat there and then. Enjoy your roast <laughs> dinner, mum. <laughs> yes, get in your poncho, but don't use the bag. Yeah. Just right on the family turkey for Thanksgiving. Oh. In, f in front of like the extended family so that yeah, your parents right? are extra embarrassed yeah so yeah i mean so. you could choose the bugaboop tea, bugaboop <laughs> bugapoop tea or a zebra tarantula i mean we got a lot of things here i'm not doing the tarantula beetles. i'll do the tea water scorpion no no i'll do the tea i'm not earthworm eating jerky huh earthworm jerky fuck no cricket powder no. Can you make like a protein shake out of this cricket powder? Hell oh, yeah, good. you can. People make them. Oh my god. All right. Well, if you need games, you first, guys, lady. got some nice cricket powder. <laughs> no. All right. Um, I'll do the shit tea. Yeah, I would never want to eat a tarantula. I always think mm -hmm. about that. Well, I don't think about it, but like when I was younger, I'd watch that show Survivor, which actually just had a really big drama. Um, I guess a contestant at the end outed another one as transgender yeah i really... saw it but i didn't read it yeah i like... watched the clip it was like he was an asshole um he was a gay man like i'm i'm surprised he didn't know not to do that but he was getting voted out so i guess he was desperate the, so he the just, weird like, thing outed is, someone why wasn't it edited out well that's what i wonder too like because it would be really scummy of the show to like put it on there but i'm hoping they asked permission um, I, don't but I don't know. I don't know. I, well, the like, thing is, I mean, you give up all guy, your though. rights. You give up like, all your rights when angry. you do something like that. But I mean, I would have said, hoped that it would have been common decency to ask and check before before that happened. But yeah, the guy um, used it as an example of that person being uh, deceptive. Like, yeah, well, you guys didn't know he was transgender. Her, that's deception. And everyone was like, fuck you. So I liked that, that everyone like right away was like, Good. Oh, what the fuck, dude? Well, so, yeah. hopefully the trans person got uh, support. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, yeah, but about, yeah, they did. They got a lot. But Good. yeah, um, and the guy I'm pretty sure got voted out. But Survival, Survivor always like, they had to do these tasks where like you had to eat like a fucking tarantula. No. What was that one that Joe mm. Rogan used to do? Fear oh, yeah, Factor? Fear Factor. I watched that too. That was nasty too. I would literally throw up about one in three episodes. But I always <laughs> think about that though. Like, okay, how much money would it take for me to just like do it? And I know as soon as like I would just feel its little hairy leg on my tongue, oh, I'd want to puke. And I, But how much money? Do you think you, how much money would it take for you to... Eat a oh, I'm terrible. Like, you know how I vomit quick. Like, even mm. just seeing, I knew it was a Snickers bar going into that bag, but I could still feel like bile starting to work its way up yeah. because my brain, like my imagination is, is a cunt. I'm sorry. It really uh. is. I can't, I would throw up. I probably wouldn't even get the bug near my mouth. I would like, uh, I feel like I would um, like bite. You know how tarantulas have those little butts? The little lower their lower abdomen or whatever it's called? Like, yeah. I would bite into that and just fucking... I would just probably die. <laughs> I wouldn't even, like, puke. I would just die right away. Uh, I would mm -hmm. have to be... I'm trying to think of the price for me to eat a tarantula. I wonder if I'd do it for 100K. That's, I'd, like, maybe I'd my least... I'd attempt to eat one for 100K, but I wouldn't yeah, if I would it was, too. like, if you I might attempt for 50K. gagged. If you retched or gagged, 
or throw up you'd lose some money than I wouldn't because I know I will I wish like I'd have to be really be... fucking high <laughs> it would be easier if you could like even if you puked you could just eat your puke and that would count would yeah that would be would that would that. be to me a bit easier than whatever. yeah I just really quick like try to ignore it and really quick like crunch it up and then probably puke and then like just <laughs> I, I remember listening and Joe really Rogan oh. Rogan was talking about you know when they do the blends of things he would they, yeah. would, say, they would go to these really expensive cheese shops and just get the stinkiest like most aged cheese they could find uh, just to make it smell way worse than it would taste that's, I, that's I just horrible. couldn't do it I like yeah when I have gross things I need to hold my nose because no. if I don't like it's so much more difficult I'm way more less likely to puke if I just hold my nose and I can't smell whatever it is. But then there's things with weird, like, I don't like slimy textures, but also a little, like, a little slimy. What Mm. the heck? Hold on. What? (laughs) If you tell me you haven't been recording, I'm going to come punch you. You haven't I been got recording. a white boy notification because this is his streaming computer and I'm using oh. OBS. I didn't know his notifications were live and I just heard a robot go, hey, white boy, love you, man, or something. <laughs> I don't even know if it's streaming <laughs> or if it's just like a random donation. All right. Well, no, we're good. No, yeah, okay. Sort of I was going to say. If you guys were wondering why there was a random robot saying, hello, white boy. <laughs> God, that's funny. So where the hell do we start with the news? I mean, it was like, even, I hate to say it, but like the Pepsi United Holocaust Center thing is the lightweight news, right? Let's start with Pepsi and United, yeah. So Pepsi came under flag. I'm sure, we're not going to cover it in detail. It was an ad. It was a shitty ad. It was tone deaf. Uh, Kendall yeah, Jenner like Kendall or Kylie Jenner, Jenner or Kim yeah. Kardashian or one of those lot handed yeah, a pop Kendall. of Pepsi and World Peace was bought from a can of Pepsi, right? And now I thought the ad was okay. I got why people got pissed off. I think it was over whatever. However, was it Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter tweeted out, if only daddy had known about the power of Pepsi. And that, to me, made the ad incredible. There were a lot of funny memes going on about it. I mean, there was always, like, just a Pepsi and, like, you know, just a historical context, but, like, a really bad one. Yeah, like the Pepsi in front of the the tanks and whatever. But anyway, that went... United just blew it out of the water. Like, we we thought, well, no company can make a PR blunder (laughs) like this. And then out comes united now i was a weird one with united yeah i am a little bit too and it's really like it's an unpopular opinion if you even defend united a little people get very upset okay viewers get your pitchforks ready people love pitchforks now too by the way that's half these like little pr things is like yeah people get outraged but people really love getting outraged if you are a professional keyboard warrior Get the keys ready. Uh, No, so here's the thing. First of all, yes, it's United's fault. But, and this is why. I think once you are on the plane, your boarding pass has been scanned, you were sat down. As far as I'm concerned, no take back seats. I understand that the airline has the right, but I believe like it was only a four hour drive, right? From where they were to the actual destination. And I think removing four people, giving them a ton of money, making them move off a plane and wait 24 hours, uh, well, it wasn't even a ton of money. It was like, what, 800 bucks? Yeah, um, that's the highest they went. I Usually just, they go way higher. I would have just stuck the crew in a Uber. Like my passengers yeah. are on the plane at this point. However, right? So I think United dicks for that. But if you are asked to leave the plane, and he was, he was asked by the air hostesses, he was asked by the captain. They then got two police officers to come and talk to him. There's now video that shows the police saying, if you don't leave, we're going to have to drag you out of here. And he replies, then do it. Take me to jail. Drag me out of here. Whatever. Um... So then I was like, well, that's excessive force. But then I was thinking about it. And I'm like, he's on the window seat. There's an empty seat beside him. How the hell do you get a guy out of a a chair that won't leave? Yeah. There's no other way. 
it's unfortunate that it happened like that. But if you have to remove someone from a plane, there's probably going to be injuries. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate in that situation. I really do feel for that guy. But I think um, this it sucks, gotten the publicity. but he should have left. Yeah, it wouldn't have gotten the publicity <clears throat> unless he did get hurt. But he could have got off the plane and then dealt with United and said, all right, this was really unacceptable. Um, and then dealt with the situation. Uh, but of course, it wouldn't have gotten the publicity that it got here. I mean, it uh, was horrifying, but he was a belligerent passenger. But United were just fucking dickheads for doing that while people are on the plane. Yeah, I don't and understand, like, why they boarded everyone. Like, whenever I'm... I fly a decent amount, and whenever there's that issue, they always start off, like, all right, we'll offer $200. It's always really low, and it's when you're all sitting waiting for the plane. Like, it's never... No one's ever seated. No. Um, no, and and then they just keep going up and up and up the price until someone's finally like, yeah, okay, I'll take that. Um and that's normally what they do. Like, and I've heard them say, "Oh, we, our budget only goes to this much." And then, sure enough, like no one takes it. Fifteen minutes later, like, "Oh, now we can offer this much." Yeah, um, but that's it. And then they like I try to get people to take it, but what they really just pissed done that. me off was knowing that the drive was only four hours. Yeah, it was what Chicago to St. Louis. Yeah, so I would have just put the crew in a cab. They have to have, like, United vans, right? I don't know. Yeah, like, I know it's not going to be pleasant, but if the passengers are already on the plane... But then, so I understand that the security people that were brought on, I see them as separate to United. United were dickheads. The security people were left with no other option. They were brought in to remove a passenger. There is no other way to remove a passenger who is refusing to leave other than drag his ass out, and that is over a chair, over armrests, and there's going to be injuries. There's no real way to do it. Um, I mean, I'm sure someone has some technical way, but apart from like those vending machine claws, uh, I Man, don't that see. That guy who did it was a beast. Reaccommodate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy. Was and a I beast. think the CEO was just fucking terrible. Oh we my god. We apologize for having to re- I think he's newer. If I remember correctly, he's a newer CEO. I don't of, know. Of United. And yeah, he he messed up a lot. Just and then, of course, like so stupid. the memes were absolutely oh, incredible. So Go good. internet. That was a complete win for the internet. And like, what was the tweeting? Like United's new logo or new motto or whatever. And it was just, oh, there were some fabulous ones. Um, you got to look at them if you haven't already seen them. I'm not going to go into detail or explain any of them because I'm pretty sure most of you have seen them, right? Man, I've been addicted. To, there's been so many good memes lately. Uh, just the World War Three memes. I've been loving those. It's like I'm scared of dying. <laughs> but yeah. like some of these memes are so good. It was like <laughs> hashtag America is over party. There were so many good ones there. Oh my God. The just, internet yeah. is on fire this week. We just had like back to back things. And then of course with Spicer, uh, you know, Hitler wasn't uh, horrific enough to use chemical weapons on his own people. I understand that it was a slip of a tongue. And then we get to the Holocaust Center. And I'm like, wait. Was it a slip of the tongue, or do you, know, you I, just not I, I know think how was. this thing worked? <laughs> like, I'll defend Spicer because, like, whenever he talks, he sounds like ridiculously nervous. Like, I don't know if he has like hardcore anxiety, <laughs> but like, he just seems like he he gets so flustered that he says things completely wrong all the time. He also said that they were trying to destabilize Syria. Oh, yeah, I saw that. But if you want to have a... Here's the thing. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, why don't they just fire Spicer? He's a moron. No one else wants that fucking job. It's 180 (laughs) grand a year, and it's going to short on your life quicker than smoking 20 packs of cigarettes will a day. They got to offer more for that job. Yeah, I mean, 180 grand, that is nothing. I would not do that job for 180 grand. Uh, But if you want to laugh... I might for the lulz. If you want to laugh at a Spicer thing, the Daily Show... (laughs) cut together like preschool kids um and him like talking so it's like voiced <laughs> over so you've got these kids like tell us about russia and he's like no april i told you but is it my <laughs> turn to like and it is the funniest video i gotta ever. check I've, that out yeah i've made it i've made a note i'll link you in the description mm. the daily Hold show on. trevor noah 
they did this thing and it was incredible. I think I think I tweeted it as well, but I didn't know where it was from. from, from, from. from. It's a Daily Show last night and it was on there. Wait, Kitty. I can't make Alex's notification stop. Oh my god. I you were just like 50 cent came up like, hey, it's your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Like it was this right. is haunted. I heard a random boo, and I was like, "That was probably just me hearing things." I don't normally hear things though, but I was just hoping it wasn't. So there might be a bit of a pause here, but don't worry about it. Kelly's just been trying to get rid of Alex's stream notifications. Damn We're, like it, talking Alex. about serious shit, and it's like it's your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we hope Holocaust you enjoyed that. It's your birthday. <laughs> But they've gone now, so there should be no more. But it wouldn't be a normal Kitty and Kelly podcast without fuck ups. <laughs> yeah, just tons of them. All but the like time. in a non dramatic thing, we can start the fact that Trump's trying to go to war and stuff in a bit. Did you see um the Emmys? Um so there's a nom now I'm probably gonna use wrong terminology here. Um because I just don't know much about uh, non binary stuff. Um, but there's a non-binary actor or actress. There is no unisex term. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there for actor or actress? They? How do you say that? Oh, oh, in terms of actor and actress? I mean, I yeah. think they're all called... A it's like, it's weird. Actress, wasn't it actors was just a normal term and then they added actress? So I don't know. Asia there's like a history born... or something. I mean... Deep, like longer in history, only men were allowed to act. To like, act, that's yeah. So way back Asia when. was born female, identifies as non-binary, um, and is up for an Emmy or two, I think. Uh, and was like, what category do I go in? Because I neither identify as an actor or an actress. I am neither male or female. While born female, I don't identify. Emmy said, pick your own category, and I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool too, man. I picked the category where, every, like, I was like, which one can I win the most? Which one's got the shit actors going? <laughs> like, I wonder, like, um, if they would ever uh, just make it just one category, like best actor, and then it's men and women. Asia is they play a non-binary character. Oh yeah, it was um for Billions. I can't or remember. No, I haven't seen it. See, like, I would like to know what is the difference between someone who's gender fluid and non-binary. Is there a difference? Or is gender fluid where one day you could identify as a woman and another a male? Whereas it's non-binary? I feel like I'm gender fluid. My, I don't know, my Twitch chat told me I was because I said I don't feel like really like a man or a woman and I just kind of choose roles from both. At times no, I, I like completely both. get that. Um, but I, I'm not, I don't like really read a lot. I haven't read a lot about those specific things. It would be a really interesting guest to get on Real Talk. You know, maybe someone who's gender fluid or non-binary yeah. or whatever. That could be a good educational thing. Because that's fairly new to me, even though like I grew up in like the LGBT community. Um, that I, I have never had experience with anyone yeah. that was non-binary or... I've never really heard those words until recently. And then, like, and you know, when people started talking about it, I was like, hmm, me. that's really interesting. Because I always kind of felt like, like, when I was a kid, like, I want boy toys and girl toys. And I liked them both. And it was yeah. like, when I when I thought about it in my head, I was like, I, I wasn't confused, but I was just like, I'm both. I like both. When I was, yeah, like, you know, the whole non-binary thing confuses me. And it's not because I'm offended by it or I find it weird or anything like that. It's just... It's just a new term, right, for me. Yeah. I haven't experienced it. You know, when I was growing up, uh, I was fucking a lot of women. Lots mm -hmm. and lots of women. And there were days, you know, I've got fairly big tits. Um, I keep them well covered. But uh, there were days when, you know, I was at university, I would bind my boobs down to pull off a shirt. You know, I had very, very short hair. And I would look more masculine than, than I would on other days. But at the same time, I'd well, my friends called it doing drag, where I'd wear a dress or a skirt mm. out in public and stuff and go very feminine. Um, but I saw that as more just me being me. I was a bit fluid. Some days I just felt more masculine than feminine and vice versa. That's, a, that's I guess, how I felt too. And I yeah. never really put like a term on it or looked for a term. I just thought it was sort of normal. And then yeah. like in school, like 
your women you like learn about women's rights and stuff and whatever we made all this progress and then my parents had certain expectations of me even though I had a stay at home mother the expectations were for me to like you know um, be able to support myself and not really like look towards marriage as like a definite thing but yeah. be able to like yeah support myself so it felt a little different like I had to take almost masculine roles and feminine roles so that I could like complete who I was supposed to be yeah, no, I get that. I mean, I'm pretty much more feminine now, but I'm very butch in my personality. And um, and it's funny, but yeah, personality-wise, I'm probably more masculine than feminine, but the way I present myself and the way I feel is more feminine um, yeah. now. I seem to have kind of evened out in that. Um, and I'm not saying that that in any way is being non-binary or gender fluid, but I can kind of comprehend that. Um, when you're when you're trying to find yourself, uh, whatever you may you may never be happy as female or as male. You may find yourself happy in between, like Asia. Um, so I mean, I'd now, love like, to. Have I that. feel like. Do you have? I think I've talked about this before. Maybe I've talked to you about it before. Maybe even on the podcast. But like, I, I feel like I dream as both. Like sometimes I'm a guy, like I just am, and then sometimes I'm just a girl. Like I'm me, like as I am a woman. And I don't know. I no, you haven't. Both. Um, I think the only thing I'd, I think I'm pretty happy I'm female because I've got great tits. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, like when I'm at the mall and there's a line for the toilet, I really just want a dick. Like, Man, I just want to like, <laughs> I want yeah, to pee I up against the wall. I have extreme penis envy. Yeah, I just I think do it would be penis. so much more fun to have a penis. Yeah, you could do helicopter dick. <laughs> so, like, I guess I could do like helicopter boobs, but it's not really like. It's just painful. It's just like, yeah, it's painful. <laughs> And I mean, you don't get the full like swing like you would no. a dick. Yeah, it's not fair. So yeah, I have slight penis envy. Um, but uh... add it to the women's march. We need helicopter dicks. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need. It should be a new add-on while we have Obamacare. You know, in the essential plan, <laughs> helicopter dicks provision for women. Is there a surgery for helicopter dick? <laughs> I want to keep my pussy, but can I also have a helicopter dick? Where would you attach it, though? If you wanted to keep Belly the button. Nice little ad. Like, you just plug it in. It would just be weird. It would be so weird. <laughs> it would be hilarious, though. It would be really funny. You could helicopter so we probably just, like, day. offended a ton of people. But, yeah, if you know any YouTubers... No one's who offended are... at helicopter dick. They're all so excited. All the girls right now are like, I wish I had a helicopter dick, too. Yeah. So um, if you know any YouTubers who are non-binary or gender fluid or whatever, let us know. Link in the description. Maybe we'll get one of them on for a... I thought you were going to ask about helicopter dick. And we were going to do a real talk. And if you know dick. any YouTubers skilled in the art of helicopter dick, <laughs> also <laughs> link them below. Send them <laughs> Send them to Kelly. Uh, but no, um, <laughs> you know, link us in the description because maybe we'll get one of them on... For a real talk, because I noticed a couple of people were asking about um, androgyny and stuff like that in the comments, um, which obviously is different. Uh, and, you know, be prepared. If we get someone who's gender fluid or non-binary on, we're probably going to fuck up with the terms. But, hey, we'll all learn together. Well, that's that'll and that'll be why they're there to really, like, get us woke and yeah. educate us. Please don't ever use that term again. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 don't, I think I like to use it ironically. Um, I think <laughs> even the people who use it, I think they think it's kind of silly too. Now it's just kind of lost. It's awful. It's awful. Oh, it's oh, like me God. trying to do gangster talk or something. It just doesn't work. Yo, uh, what's up? <laughs> doesn't work with the accent. No. But so, do we want to do we want to talk about Sir Cheeto Trumpenstein? I don't yeah. want to, but like, <laughs> or we could deal with Chechnya, where they're locking up LGBT people, killing yeah. them, denying that they they exist. Um, so, it, I, from what I've read so far, they've killed. I want to say they killed two people, but is it really? I also read that no one really knows. No one knows, but they 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 think that maybe fifty to a hundred people are in this center right now, yeah. and they're being tortured. Some have been released back to their family for their family to commit an honor killing. So <clears throat> gross. Um. <clears throat> so how do like my I I hadn't read about this. 
How do they like choose? Like, how did they choose these people? How did they know? Was this something where like some of them aren't someone even posted confirmed. to social media or like their family said, "Oh, they're gay." Um, some of them are confirmed uh, gay or whatever, and others are just suspected of it, which is why they're being taken to these centers and tortured to find out whether they're really gay. Some of them are being killed. Some of them are being given back to the family under the expectation of being killed. Is there just men? You know? It looks to be only men. Um, yeah, that's from as far as I could tell. That was that was uh, just men. So now Chechnya is like, a, is it a republic of Russia? I'm not sure of the term. If you pray, pray for them, man. Like if you don't do something, I don't know. Send tweet about it. Get get vibes. good vibes or um, underground railroad. I don't know if the Quakers are operating out there. Uh, like, what do you do? Like, I, I mean, it's hard for us. Like, you know, it's like, what do you do to like? You, can you help them because you know we're yeah, a world I mean, apart like what is the solution there so the quake you know quakers uh ran an underground railroad to get lgbt people out of a few countries but i don't know if they're operating out of chechnya um it's something i'll look up and if i can find anything i'll put a link in description i throw money at them quite a bit um i mean i'm sure like it seems like and i'm not talking quaker like... oats we're not talking about a fucking oat mill company <laughs> yeah it seems like uh, there's in in is when there's issues like this that are just horrible it seems like people do step up to help others um not ev- like, but at not this point it's like where people, do we like, where do you help there's so much shit going on i think it's again it has to be sort of like that underground railroad kind of thing where it has to be just very secretive hiding and and getting them out slowly. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I threw some money at um, Society of Friends and their Underground Railroad. If I can find links to places uh, where yeah, we'll, you can we'll help. Yeah, we'll share those. We'll share. Um, I'm making a note now. Uh, um, but, you know, there's a lot more hate and intolerance that's kind of spreading in the world right now. Um, and it seems to be heightened since Trump has come into office. Um I mean, it's always been bad around the world, but it's almost like now we have this twat as president. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if it was like, even if we hadn't had Trump, like it, it just seemed like it was raising even before that, like there was more. Yeah, there was certainly a lot more tension, but because Trump has these backward fucking views as well, I feel like would have che- would Chechnya have done that if we had like an anti-Russian president? I still think they probably would have. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. They seem, it's all they hearsay. Seem like Who horrible. Knows? It's just awful. Like, why can't people just be people? Like, um, and just get on with your own lives and I, not I give hate, a shit. Like, if yeah, you believe I, in God, then you should believe that God will give the ultimate judgment. It is not your place to take away a life. Yeah. It, it, it's just gross. Mm. And it's like so hard for me to put myself into that way of thinking because I just can't, compre- I can't comprehend like feeling that way about other people's beliefs. Like yeah. if someone has violent beliefs where they act them out on other people, of course I'm like going to have a problem with that. But <coughs> in, in cases like where, you know, if a man wants to marry a man, why do I care? Yeah, you exactly. Know, I mean, I was, to. I was raised in a somewhat religious family. I went to a religious school, but the, I wasn't raised to judge other people. Like that was one of the big things. I don't care what you like, who you love, what you do. I was raised doing the accelerator reader program. Um, well, basically it's just, you have to read a bunch of kids books and you get points for them. Um, and like one thing that I really notice about children's literature is like so much of it is about um, just being nice to others and being kind and helping other people out and it's i don't know we need we need people to read more children's books because like i knew like don't be mean to others but maybe whatever you know shit's happening is awful and hopefully something can be done but i don't know what um god what next everything's so depressing yeah and a lot of these situations it's like what the fuck do you do fucking depressing we got trump launched a moab he's bombed syria and like Syria is awful, like because a lot of people don't know this, but there's like four sides to the whole Syria war thing, right? So Trump bombed a lot of Assad. Different groups. The issue with Assad, of course, is that it, 
Assad is allies with Russia, China, and Iran, who are huge, right? They're big powers. Um, so now he's pissed off Russia and China, and now he's going after North Korea. And isn't North Korea allied with China? I'm not sure. Yeah, China, I feel like So he's tolerates... like double whammying, poking China, mm -hmm. like come And then China, me, China sent back uh, North Korea's coal orders because they get coal from North Korea. And yeah. they're going to get U.S. coal now. Yeah, uh, so I don't so know. So they're like, I think they're, China's starting to like get really annoyed with them. And then they progressively have. It seems like each year China's like, all right, you need to calm down and or we're going to do this. And I think and, what uh, may happen if Trump doesn't cause war is if China and the U.S. become friends, then maybe Russia will start to become friends. But that's going to be awkward because like they're a bit backwards in their views. Um so and that would prevent a war however trump is just like i feel like he's just like they did what fuck it give me the case da, da, well da. Didn't, didn't uh eric trump said like ivanka i don't know the specific quote but i think it was pretty close to ivanka this. influenced the yeah, uh, it, bombing of the airfield yeah yeah it's something like that where it was just like yeah ivanka daddy trump did it because ivanka said so um, I mean, there were a lot of people I saw, like, mixed responses. At first, when C the whole chemical attack happened, I saw so many people were like, oh, Trump's not going to do anything because of yeah. Russia. Fuck him. And then they did the bombing. And then, that, like, that opinion instantly changed to, like, why are you doing this? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. It's like, like people, are, if... I feel like people are angry no matter what, too, now. And it just complicates everything. I... My thing is, right, like if you're going to bomb, he did it the best way. He targeted a, a specific area and did that. The Moab, yeah. I thought, was a bit overkill. He was going for some tunnels that are in the middle of nowhere. So while we don't know what the damage is, uh, if there's any to civilians or whatever. But beyond that, my point is, you know, 21 million in Tomahawks, 313 million in Moabs. You know, it's like over 140 million first moab used uh you know 340 whatever million uh that could have done so much in this country yeah and i mean you how know. much did like i mean even before trump though weren't we bombing the middle east like i wonder how much not of to the, the US extent money... that he is i mean he's well, yeah like the i said the first shit. mob you know the used. stuff that his family has stocks in that's what he's using yeah. Um, oh, but either way either now? way i think <laughs> we constantly have these this issue where we're just constantly bombing and bombing and bombing and then sometimes you get civilians and like in my opinion like that's creating more terrorism because Absolutely. the people in that the country they're just like them. yeah like they just see that we're bombing them all the time and it's like, like well, well, well what do you, you expect them to do yeah exactly i just you can't bomb your way to peace that is my opinion as much as i understand that he's done it the best way i can't look at that and go that costs 313 million dollars yeah, and, and your country is... is hurting right now yeah. and i'm that 313 dollars could have done a lot i mean it wouldn't have done you know it's not as much as you think like 313 million will do but that would have been meals on wheels. That would have been a little more support to the elderly, a little bump in areas that needed it. You know, I, I just yeah. I think that money could have been better kept spent domestically. Now, obviously, the bomb was already made and thus already paid for. But now one has to be built to replace it. Yeah, I, it's a weird situation, too, because at the same time, you don't want forces like ISIS to grow in that area. Um, yeah. and get bigger and larger and larger to the point where like suddenly they have this huge army um and they're you know they're killing a bunch of people there anyways it's i'm kind of like glad he did it the way he did it As if that Spicer makes sense said, they're destabilizing <laughs> yeah i'm glad he did it the way he did it as if they were targeted and it looks like there weren't too many civilian casualties i hope there were none um i I'm very anti-war, but I still support the troops. If that makes sense, I'm a bit weird. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm that. I'm similar. Like, it, I don't want war. And and again, like I said, I think in certain situations, I think these things create more terrorism. Mm. Um, but at the same time, like, yeah, I want to support like our troops and everything. Because there's oh. like, there's, like I know so many great vets and stuff, and you know, they yeah. just want to make sure. <coughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, 
I just don't even want to talk about it anymore. I'm sick of it. I'm like, are we at war yeah. with North Korea? Are we at war with China? Russia? Who's he pissing off today? Like every day I wake up. Sean Spicer just walked out of the press conference this morning. He's like, I'm going to keep it sweet. Uh, sir, can you confirm that Trump didn't even authorize the Moab? Yep, yeah, bye. <laughs> he's like, oh shit, I'm out of here. I can't handle yeah, this Yeah, he today. just like, so we don't even know if it was Trump that authorized the I just said thing. Holocaust Center at the last one and yeah. Hitler did nothing wrong. Oh no. There were no chemical weapons used against his own people. What are you guys talking about? He just took him to the Holocaust Center, gave him some cookies and some warm milk. <laughs> like, it sounds like a welcome uh... center. Like, Thank you for the coming to the Holocaust <laughs> and then there's like all this like you can tell there's so many different like um propaganda kind of things going around like russian propaganda american propaganda in mm. all of these situations if you really look around online and Facebook, um, and just like reading each like russian news versus u.s news is so yeah. interesting the the like for russia it's like this is a, a false flag and you know these the, what the white helmets or something they create these yeah. videos and then they have videos of people like you know seemingly faking you know being bombed or something and then you have the u.s where it's like they're like oh we have proof that assad did it and it's just like a fucking mess facebook's actually implemented some kind of face fake news thing it, it popped up in my feed earlier i didn't really look at it but it looks like they're now doing something to combat it at least mm -hmm. um because even the u.s side there's a bunch of bullshit so man i don't know fine. how i feel about that because <sighs> there is a lot of bad like fake news it's spread back. out there there's a ton of it but then there's also the mainstream media who does crappy stories too that are just completely wrong and mm -hmm. they've been doing like they've been doing a lot of fear mongering lately like every little thing north korea does it's like oh well, yeah because like, of clickbait it's yeah, easy I mean, to it, do they can make so much money bait. off it yeah I need to change the subject. I can't talk about this shit. Anymore. Yeah, let's um, let's talk about something really lighthearted. Oh, Trump's gonna kill you? No, I've been joking. <laughs> uh, it looks like Trump is threatening to kill Obamacare without the use of Congress. And how he wants to do this, obviously, Ryan Care or whatever you want to call it, failed. Um, now, the Freedom Caucus had said they would vote for it if they would repeal more. And what would be repealed would be mostly things for women. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Obamacare had like minimum essential coverage uh, that insurers had to provide on every policy. And it was like, um, you know, your pap smears, your mammograms, um, whatever guys have, prostate exams, things like that. Um, it would have minimum essential coverage. It would cover pre-existing conditions and things like that. So the Freedom Caucus, who voted against it before, is saying, well, we'll vote with you if you get rid of that. Get rid of the protection for pre-existing conditions. Get rid of the minimum essentials. We'll vote for it. Well, Trump is now saying he wants to, instead of doing that, force the Democrats to work with him. And the way he's going to do that is by collapsing Obamacare. Now, obviously, he can't repeal Obamacare without Congress. But what he can do is for these companies that are offering insurance on the Obamacare marketplace, they get certain government subsidies. There's cost sharing in offering things like those minimum essential requirements. Uh, what he can do is he can cut the budget. So he can say, we're not cost sharing these anymore. So what essentially will happen is that the insurers will leave the marketplace and Obamacare will implode in itself because insurers will no longer be have the budget to do the cost sharing. That's really so messed gonna up because it, it's going to hurt people it. like yeah. really bad because that was a big deal like, and people wanted a replacement. So, yeah, there were people who were against the Affordable Care Act. OK, but they made it clear like we want a replacement because we don't want you people like people that want health care. We don't want you to lose it. We don't want you to be paying outrageous premiums. Yeah. And that seemed good because no one was going to you know get screwed and lose their health care. This just completely goes past that. So I, I just hope this doesn't happen because that's terrifying. Like yeah, some people it's... just flat out need uh, health care. I mean, there's people who have to choose. And we've talked about this numerous times on the podcast. And I'm sure you've we talked heard about it, it just everywhere. before. You know, people like, dying because they can't afford that. Insulin. Yeah. I mean, you choose. Do I want to go into debt for life or do I want to die? And that's not a cool choice to make, especially in a nation like this where I think, you know, Healthcare should be a right. I think everyone ha at this point, we are a civilized society. There should be uh, a a baseline of a right to life, right? We're not. I, I hear this term entitlement thrown around, and I honestly, and I hear it from some quite 
you know, not very well off Republicans, certainly where I live. And I'm like, well, what about me? Right? My cost of health is, is a lot more um, that, than you. Should I have to work two jobs to buy my health insurance? Now I do that and I do it happily. But I also have that extra stress of knowing that if I take a day off, can I afford to? Like, mm -hmm. the, you know, there's really no downtime just to pay for the extra costs that I have from being ill, if you want to say ill. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It, it scares the shit out of me because a couple of my drugs are very, very expensive. And right now, one of them isn't covered on a lot of plans. So it would increase my cost by just under a thousand dollars a month. Um, but the GOP healthcare plan, Ryan Care, whatever you want to call it, was just terrible. So if that's anything to go by, you know, I mean, it's all very well and good to saying, oh, Obamacare premiums and everything increased and, and they did. The deductibles were ridiculous. I mean, some of them are like $10,000. No one could afford that. But if he did like a single payer for medication, that would bring down that cost, which would bring down the cost of health insurance. I understand it's not that simple, but it kind of is. <laughs> You know? Yeah. And I mean, that's what he, he, he was campaigning on for a long time, saying single payer, single payer. And I really wish he would do that. And, but and he I can't think because all his billionaire cabinet members <laughs> are, are insurance company owners yeah. or bank owners or, you know, their 401ks rely on all, the all these pharmaceuticals. Companies. Yeah. I mean, it's so corrupt. You know, the one, the great thing that has come out of the Trump presidency is this pay to play and the corruption in the system has become far more transparent with Trump because he does he's not a politician he doesn't have the politician's filter Trump thinks he tweets he doesn't there's no there's no filter there he's just like <laughs> onto twitter <laughs> like there, there's no fucking filter there's no i imagine there's an intern sat there going shit shit he's got his phone what the fuck's he going to do what the fuck <laughs> um but there's no filter on that. Um, and I think, you know, his behavior, his irrational behavior, um, uh, and the way he just prods people so publicly um, has made it way more apparent. Um, I don't think our generation was this interested uh, when, you know, Obama was running. Yeah, we were, we were kind of interested, yeah. but not this passionate about it. Like, there aren't many people you can't sit down with nowadays and have a political conversation. Think about it five years ago, sitting down and discussing politics. It was like, oh, fuck. Go and away. I think people are becoming more aware that, um, you know, especially with like um, lobbying and corporations, mm. you know, paying politicians. And how blatant it is pay to play. Yeah. And just how easy it is to go online. Right. Let's see. Like in Illinois, we were, they were looking at uh, marijuana legislation to make it legal. And like so many of these politicians have money from pharmaceutical companies and law mm -hmm. enforcement and then they're like oh no we can't do it because of the kids it's like really the and kids? then look at that, that or was it that you took ten thousand from this pharmaceutical company yeah i mean look at that pharmaceutical company who was lobbying against cannabis and they were the people behind fentanyl or encouraging the over prescribing of fentanyl and then of course they just launched their new synthetic yeah they literally had <laughs> yeah, they literally had executives charged because of, like, just making, do like, at, I think with a specific doctor, they were having them over-prescribe. They had, like, a weird deal, back-end deal. Uh, but, yeah, they get the patent to synthetic uh, marijuana or cannabis, and then all of a sudden, that's Schedule 2 from the DEA. Synthetic. Hmm. It is no synthetic longer, Synthetic has like... killed people, right? Um, well, I mean, I'm no, assuming you're... the pharmaceutical version was probably would probably be a little safer, but yeah, but spice and stuff isn't really like okay. you can't really compare it because it's all made in China yeah. and it's probably got rat yeah, poison and some of that bug tea in it. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, that's um, that's ridiculous. That's here's disgusting. Here's the issue: it's not the will of the people at this point. I think it's like 56 percent are for legalizing cannabis in some way, um, and the other people maybe think it's like. They and I'm let pretty the propaganda sure get to you. I'm pretty sure a certain like a decent amount of people like, oh, my God, I think I'm pretty sure like 85 percent of people don't think it's more dangerous than meth and heroin. Right. Mm -hmm. Which are above it or below it in the scheduling. Um, and I 
I think there's some UN thing that prevent not UN NATO maybe I don't know there's something internationally those. where we can't make cannabis legal yeah. but Canada's about done they're like fuck it some other Roll country just joint. did but I don't know if they were part of that group Oops. But uh, uh, there have been a few countries, I think, that are just like, ah, oh, screw it. We just need to stop this. It's it's stupid. I just wish, like, you know, we're supposed to be in a democracy. It's supposed to be the will of the people. And every action I'm seeing right now from this administration is is pretty much the opposite of what the average person wants. And while I we feel can like it's always been somewhat... that way. Not even just this administration. It, 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 like, half this shit is always, oh, well, who's paying the most? Yeah, yeah. And we weren't going to win with Trump. We weren't going to win with Hillary on we that. We certainly were like, not going to win with Hillary. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, I mean, these, these she's a scary just... woman. We had no chance. And um, Bernie, Bernie Sanders is has... there still a chance for Bernie? He's now we... been voted the most popular senator in yeah, the US. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Um, and, you know, I'm weird. I'm kind of part Republican, part liberal, part libertarian. Like, mm-hmm. you know... I, I don't I don't agree with any of the extremes of the Republican Party or the Democrat Party or yeah, whatever. No. So, I, you know, um, I have friends that are hardcore Republican. And I have friends that are hardcore Democrat. Um, and I don't think they're representing anyone. And I think it's become way more transparent. So I'm hoping that will do something. Um, non-Trump topic. <laughs> yeah, no I government didn't put it talk, in the topic. topic. No I corporation. Put it... Something nice. Oh, there's nice. a corporation. There's a oh, corporation. <sighs> Nestle held a town hall meeting yesterday or a discussion to start bringing water to their bottling plant from Michigan. You know where that little town no, called Flint is? There, aren't they, they were like having Michigan sell them like Michigan water. Was it? Yeah, they want to bottle it. But there's yeah. no there's no clean water for the residents, but Nestle wants it. Yeah, Nestle is like one of those really terrible corporations. <laughs> don't they use like, man, I don't know if this is like true or what, but I was reading and I, it was like, I want to say it wasn't just like, you know, some random website or anything. It was um, more of a mainstream news was they got in trouble because they were having children workers, like sort of slave workers. Child labor? It's not like, yeah. yeah. Nestle's a great company. They were well known for, um, they used to go to third world countries and tell the mothers that be, their breast milk was bad for the kids. So they'd give them some formula, which would then be mixed with the filthy water because they didn't have access to clean water. Yeah, that was one of Nestle's finest moments. Uh, killed many, many children. They're a wonderful company. Very, very ethical. Yeah, and I always see people that are like, we need to boycott Nestle. And, and then they're like, all right, this is a list of all their products. And it's like, oh, well, that's everything. It's like everything. half the products. That it's are like available. half the grocery store. Yeah, I have like a list of companies that I will avoid and Nestle is on there. Um, mm-hmm. But it is hard to. Like I avoid yeah, products no, with really like is. palm it's hard to get oil. Water. Palm oil, like until I started avoiding it, I didn't realize how much it was used in. Mm-hmm. Um I'm trying to make soaps for the company, you know, my Etsy store. And I'm trying to find like substitutes for palm oil because the term sustainable palm oil is bullshit. Yeah. Like it, it's not. Palm oil is not sustainable. Don't be conned into it. Um, but it makes it so lavery. Um, but yeah, I have a list of companies that I avoid. Yeah, I do too. And I try my best too. But man, Nestle is a hard one. A lot of them are hard, right? Because, uh, you know, pretty much it's like six corporations own most companies. Um, so it, it's tough. So I try and like work out where my things are from and how they're made. Um, and then I can't just have like, you know, just the water from my faucet because it makes the frogs gay. Yeah, <laughs> fucking gay frogs, man. <laughs> Alex Jones, he's on to something. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm so happy. I want to say I just read like a study that said like it was making them gay. I think it might have been like a fake news study, but they made it look really legit. (laughs) (laughs) Those frogs be gay. Look at that one with that darling bow tie modeling the waistcoat. That's very stereotypical of me, Kitty. That's very rude. How dare you? (sighs) We all know it's true. But, uh, yeah, um, Texas House just approved $20 million in funding for anti-abortion initiatives. So, like, what do they do with that? Do they just, are they going to give people birth control? 
I don't know because everyone's against birth control, aren't they? Yeah, I know. It's like you gotta choose. Funnily like, enough, God, so just here's give, them, the, give people birth control. They'll give men Viagra and stuff, but they won't give chicks birth control or whatever. I don't know. That I feel like this cabinet, we're fucked. Like I think it's fuck poor people, fuck people of color, fuck women, not in the good way, and pro Bible. And nothing else except the love thy neighbor in fact we're pro bible except any of the charitable stuff and that like that tiny thing that's like love thy neighbor that's bullshit you love that everyone the you know only god can blessed judge. be the poor fuck those dudes we're gonna we're gonna scrub that one out of the bible um and i think there's something in the bible also according to the republicans it's like no one has the right to live uh kids at school certainly don't have the right for a free lunch fuck those guys they come under the blessed be the poor also known as fuck those dudes um yeah separation of church and state you just like went right back to talking about messed up stuff i can't like there's nothing <laughs> good there's nothing i good do i got a good on. one didn't new york do you know they did um they offer free college now New York that does? is fucking awesome. Tell us more. I need something happy because I don't know I'm going enough insane. about it. Shit. All I read was the headline. <laughs> I Fuck. wish I could. Yeah, but uh All right, hang on. Let me let me do this. I think you Kelly to... can't use her computer. Yeah, I I've I've been pretty much If she does, yeah, she fucks up the uh... Okay. New York today. Oh, so you want to <laughs> the, the headlines was it neglects low income students. Oh God, HuffPost is going to start playing automatically. I hate Huffington Post. I don't know why I clicked this one. Uh, New York's free college plan neglects low-income students. Um, so it will be ensures New Yorkers free tuition at the state's public colleges if their families earn less than $125,000 annually. And it will be phased in over the next three years, beginning this fall for families that make up to a hundred grand. Um, it will only cover what the federal grants or other public aid won't. Um, oh God, college in this country is so expensive, my God. This is weird. Right, 27. If, sorry. Um, yeah, this said, like, if the program were applying to those who are now in school, not that many students or certainly a minority of students would qualify for the scholarships because most of them are working part time or taking longer than four years to graduate. So, like, do you only get four years? Like, I don't know. It, it just says you can't you can't really take a lot of time off school in this program. But I mean, I know tons of people who just who did school and had full time jobs anyways, like it was hard for them, but they made it work. See, I don't understand the attitude in America. and Maybe I'm wrong where it's like you don't invest in your kids, even though the kids are like the future of the country. Like if you have a more educated population, like it's in the country's interest, like how many dollars do they get back? if? if they were to pay for someone to go to school, like I feel like if you earn your grades in college um, or whatever you do before university where you get your degree, because I know you call university college, so that's probably going to cause some translation issues. Yeah, here, I, but I guess it's weird. There are, there are universities here and there are Wherever colleges. you go to do your thing before to get into university, I feel like if you get a certain grade, it should be a scholarship or a subsidy or whatever perhaps paid for by the taxpayers. And the reason I say that is because I'm pretty sure there's a dollar for dollar translation right here. Like every dollar you put into a person doing X degree will pay X dollars back in taxes in five, six years time. Yeah, I I, agree. I feel like it's a longer term investment. It's the same thing, I think, that if, you, if this country is going to remain barbaric enough to not offer good health care, I think that kids should be covered and I think we should have our taxes raised to cover kids. I think yeah. under the age of 18 or 16, if you want to be whatever, there shouldn't be a health cost. If you have a sick child, you should not have to worry about losing your house, being bankrupt and having nowhere to raise the kid that you've now lost all your money in saving. That shouldn't be a worry. You I should feel, be like, concentrating so on getting better. For, for parents who have to go through that. Just have a yeah. sick kid and then just really struggle. Um, 
it it, it just feels like so barbaric to me. Um, I, I grew up in England with the NHS and I'm very thankful for it. And honestly, if it wasn't for them, I'd be dead. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be earning. I wouldn't be employing people. Um, and, and I feel like if we put money in in the short term, yes, our taxes would be raised. But in the long term, the country would be in a better place, earning way more. It's like yeah, the Wheels on Wheels. They were saying like it saved like a hundred million dollars or something in extra care for the elderly because they were being visited every day so they were happier yeah. so they weren't getting sick as often and um but people can't see that it's all short-term budgets yeah it's it's very interesting yeah i feel like you have if you have more money you have more money to put into maybe your passions but also like you know if you want to start a company all mm -hmm. of that like you just explained like you can hire people like you, those sorts of things where if you can build yourself up it helps in the long run you pay more taxes um with the education thing i think an interesting sort of counterpoint i guess that i can think of is what do you do like invest in your kids yeah but like what about there are some degrees where it's like really difficult to get a job <laughs> yeah but <laughs> each year the country could you know have a list of things it needs Right? So yeah, if you're doing that's true. chemical engineering, astrophysics, whatever. Yeah, and then, like, studies. how do you decide, though? Like, would you offer free, you know, tuition for those? And I think that would be cool. Like, a lot of employers sometimes. Absolutely. Because like, if there's anyone out there who wants to go to, like, get a master's degree, sometimes if you ask your employer and say, hey, do you want to invest in me? I'll be a better employee. And then, like, some people have been able to work out, like, you know, their employer's paying yeah. for their tuition. Um, there are, like, programs like that for some, but. I think that's a really cool thing when employers do that. Yeah, I think it, you know, it's not going to be a simple solution, but I think there are solutions out there. Um, I, I feel like I still don't understand why the US has the highest, like the highest tax bracket is for us. It's for self-employed people. Like these are the people are paying more than Fortune 500 companies. You know, these giant corporations are paying 12% tax. But if you're a small business trying to get started and you're self-employed, you're paying up to 43% tax. Mm -hmm. It's the highest tax bracket. Um, and, and I think it's, I'm doing my taxes now. That's why that came up. Bollocks. It sucks. It's like, oh, and I get no tax credits for the extra stuff that I have to buy for being a part-time cripple. That's fabulous. Yes, I know that's not PC terms. It's about me, <laughs> I, so I'm allowed to insult myself. I just find it like, I feel like it's really stacked against people. Because um, you've got the self-employment tax and you've got your, your homeowner's tax, your, your whatever it is. Um, you got to cover your own health care, too. I mean, that's... Cover your own health care. You know, I feel like you're in the answer. negative before you fed yourself, like mm -hmm. the average person. There's no way most people are going to be able to buy a house anymore, especially not with property tax. Um, that's what, You know what I was thinking about? I, uh, I feel like millennials move around a lot more for their jobs. Yeah. And it's almost like renting almost works out better. Because yeah, it is. There's so a much. there's a really big argument for renting. For me, I have to buy and and not have a mortgage. Like I I will live in a shitty house that I can buy, because if I get sick, there there's more than likely in the term of a mortgage going to be a month where I'm not earning. Yeah, um, and I cannot risk me losing my house because of that. Um, so it's just whatever, different way of living, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Well, this has been a, a fucking situation. depressing uh, doom podcast. And gloom. Doom and gloom should have Fun times. Been I'm. I I got a yoga sling. Look it up if you don't know what it is. It's a sling thing that you kind of hang upside down in, from the ceiling. So if I'm on here next week with a neck brace, she that's a little wide. too much fun. So there's going to be some pictures of me probably like hanging upside down going on Twitter. I think it'd be really funny. But it's supposed to. <laughs> So my hip flexors are a real bitch. And uh, so I've been, I've, I've been doing, you know, physical therapy for the last like three and a half years with them. But there hasn't been much improvement because uh, they're very hard to stretch out with not looking obscene. You can Google where hip flexors are. Uh, and uh, 
So this is supposed to help stretch them out. So I'm going to try it, but I'm not. So you're, you're using it for physical therapy then, huh? Uh, yeah, but it has other uses as well. If you Googled <laughs> it, you know what I mean. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm going to be trying to hang upside down from this bloody thing and do yoga from it. But it's a really wide sling. So I can see myself just ending up using it as a hammock and falling asleep and be like, yeah, I've been using yeah. it for an hour a day. No improvement. <laughs> but I've just been like, ah. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to try this. I'm probably going to knock myself out because I'm going to put it downstairs where there's like the wooden floor. So it's nice and hard for me to fall on. I'm not sure how I'm going to get into the sling. Uh, I, I know there's some videos, but these are people who are a little more mobile than me. You're going to have to have someone pull you out and it's going to yeah, be a whole like, repeat of United. Yeah. And, you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how safe it's going to be. Like I have friends that are like, they're going to help me uh like use it make sure i don't kind of fall out of it or have a you know if i'm using it have a spasm but it's going to be a fucking interesting week like as i get more confident with it i might like um like instagram stories or, or something yeah you kind gotta of, like, like record a video it. of it yeah yeah maybe do a video of it um it looks and if really we get lucky cool. she'll fall no i'm just kidding. yeah if you get lucky fall. i'll fall on my fucking face like live in front of the three people that are still following me but uh yeah no i'm excited for it because i can understand how it works like inversion is very good but i've just not been able to do it um but the yoga sling looks like a gentler version of doing that without hurting my spine but still stretching me out because you see my hips yeah. slip. so like my hips slip to the point there could be three inches difference between my left and right leg um, so this should stretch me out enough without having to go through that, the yanking that the physiotherapists have to do, which is bloody yeah. painful. I have like one, I have a like similar like yoga kind of strap, but it, it's much smaller. It's not like a, a hang it from the wall kind of thing, but it's nice if you just like strap it on your foot and then you just pull that bitch off. Oh no, this is something that hangs from the ceiling, babe. Like it yeah, looks kind of like yeah, a sex it's completely thing, different. but it's like designed for yoga. But there's still some handles. But yeah, it's yeah. different. But uh, yeah, this is a big like setup. Like we've got a frame for it. It's How much does that things. cost? A lot. So this the sling itself is pretty cheap. It's like eighty bucks. Mm -hmm. um, but the frame, well, you've got to mount it in the ceiling, right? So I'm not going to mount it in the ceiling because I'm moving. So I bought a frame for like 200. So it's a pretty expensive setup, but in, with the cost of physical therapy, when you look at that, it's not, yeah. it's pretty cheap. Cause if this, if this can help me have less adjustments, they call them adjustments. It's kind of like Sorry. United reaccommodating. <laughs> it's more like yanking out the fucking joint. Uh, then it will save me money. So I'm interested. I'm scared. I'm petrified of it though. Cause I know I'm super accident prone. I don't have a great sense of balance. I'm going to smash my face in. So <sighs> yeah, I mean, you're going to kind of be hanging there in the air. Gravity is working. Ish. That I'd be scared too. I'm going to fall out. I'm going to fall on my ass, my face. I'm going to probably break my neck. I mean, I'm at least going to sprain a wrist or like, you know, smack as I kind of fall against the floor. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm next week. We can start betting on injuries. But yeah, I think... I <laughs> no, mean, that next pretty... week, no podcast. Can <laughs> yeah, next week, I'm going to be in traction, <laughs> neck brace. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so, I mean, we've got a ton of topics that we could talk about, guys, but you probably know them. They're depressing as shit. Yeah, and, um... it was a lot of depressing stuff this week. But seriously, leave us questions for the, the Britney, the, the real talk. Um, like I said, uh, she does, she covers bisexuality, she covers polyamory, BDSM, and kind of sex education stuff. Um, so I think it's going to be a really interesting episode. Oh, yeah. And this Kelly's might, new might fashion line. This my new line. podcast outfit. It's like, there's podcast so much room in here to like move around and it's like, it's comfy. It's easy clean as well. Like if you spill pizza on it, you can just. And it's. Yeah, you, you it, it would be fine. Um, it's not really thick. Like some ponchos are really thick and they make you really hot. This one's not too thick. I'm not hot, but I am a little warm. It's like toasty and, and comfortable because it's cold in my office. So I you should use this like a heated throw. I have one on my feet right now. Oh, you do? <laughs> yeah. Me too. Um, but that's because my knees are like on my chair. Like, here. well, yeah, I just have like a pad. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, my I feet have... are getting really cold lately, so. This is like a twin bed throw. 
Yeah, I have one of those too. Those, like to those are warm. dangerous. I'll like put it on me just like for a quick break and then I'm like, fuck that. I'm taking a nap. <laughs> and then you're out for the count. Yeah, and um, then it's like five hours later. Oh, crap. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Let us know your questions for Brittany. Um, like I said, that will probably be separate from the podcast. Um, so if you see it in your feed where it says like, you know, twist of insanity, real talk, and then the topic, um, that's what we're going to be doing. They're going to be, they're all pretty much going to be more mature uh, topics than, than the podcast. Um, we will be getting in deep. Yes, very deep. I'm pretty excited for it. I think it'd be good. Like it's something Kelly and I have talked about doing for a while, um, but we weren't really sure how to start it. And then it's fun. Like, and, and we'll get to research different topics and, um, and yeah. learn stuff as well. Like I do want to know more about non-binary and gender fluid and yeah, I do too. Why things like that. And I feel kind of ignorant in the fact, and I feel like I shouldn't be ignorant in it as well. So I'm, I'm, we're probably going to use the wrong terms. We're probably going to offend people unintentionally but that's part of learning right yeah that's true um like i i i think um this is kind of a weird one but like once i use the term hermaphrodite which is a scientific term um yeah. but it, it does make people mad and because the right term is intersex and i knew that but i wasn't really use i was using it in a scientific way but apparently yeah it was still very offensive so intersex, it's it's yeah. hard to like Language changes too, and I think that's an interesting thing. With like, um, more recently, there's there are a lot of new terms, and then some terms become offensive, but they weren't previously offensive, and uh, it's always a learning thing. And I think when you consider that stuff, I think it's always better instead of just getting super offended and angry to just tell someone like, "Oh, hey, you used this word, but you know this word might mm. be a little better." I mean, the only thing that you know, the pronouns thing, I do get lost in that. I do wish I could have the pronoun like bitch. I think that would describe oh. <laughs> me. Um, that would be but... pretty sweet, yes. <laughs> well, can't you choose your own? Yeah, I think so. But... Yeah, I mean, at some, like, okay, with for me with, at that point, like, if I was in a group of people, like, and they each have, like, I guess you would learn them eventually, but. It would be like very if confusing. Every single person had their own pronoun at some point. It's like, okay, I gotta learn someone's name. I gotta learn. I could totally uh, understand the binary, like, you know, uh, if you're non-binary, it's them, there, theirs. Um, that, yeah, that makes one's sense easy. in my brain. But when yeah. you get to Z, Zir, I honestly, like, and I don't mean offense by this, but I have no fucking idea. Like, I don't know what those are. Yeah, and I feel like I would do, again, like, I'd just say things wrong, like, instead of Zir. And I'd I wouldn't like, want to offend And then they'd be people. like, what did you call me? And I'd be like... Uh, yeah that's it like and, and it's not from offense it is a hundred percent from ignorance um, yeah. but i will hold my hands up and and admit that um but yeah that... so and if there's any other topics for real talk that you want to see in the future because you know it takes us a bit of time to get the right guest uh for that who can deal with us who will be okay with just being straight up um let us know and any questions for Brittany? link in or you know put it in the the comments will give you an email or something if you want to uh, have a comment done anonymously um, or you can tweet at us you can even say hey I have a question I'm gonna DM at you you know but I want to remain anonymous that's totally fine probably not with Kelly but you can DM me Kelly's way too popular okay well I guess we should wrap it up but um, so I guess I'm gonna be drinking bug shit tea next week oh yeah it's gonna be awesome. Let's see how our little pig how's the shit up. curing? Oh yeah. It's, oh, oh, nice and warm now. Or not warm anymore. It's so drying. You got a couple of corn nuggets in there, dear. Ah, uh, mm, good corn nuggets. <laughs> I swear you just did that to get me. <laughs> I, I fucking did. swear it. You're such a bitch. Um, well, hopefully next week we won't be at war. That's fine. That just looks like chocolate. That doesn't look like shit. Okay. All right. Well, guys, I guess thanks. And uh, we're going to end it before it gets any worse. Yeah. Have a great week. Bye. See you soon.